Hello there, Mark Carves Hypnotherapy here, and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This evening, um, I have Carly online. Carly was one of my um, clients, and the funny thing is, um, when I asked if she wouldn't mind doing this testimonial, she reminded me, um, like a very bad husband, that um, today is, of all things, our anniversary, isn't it, Carly? Yes. It is indeed. It is the day, to, it is one year to the day that Carly texted me uh, from a train station. Isn't that right? Yeah. It is indeed. Do you want to tell us then, say again? Fenchurch Street. Fenchurch Street. Do you want to, do you want to run us through that day then and what was going on? Um, yeah, I can do. Um, it started the day before I'd had a panic attack on the train and I couldn't make out what was going on. Um, I'd had panic attacks before, but not like this. And then the next day I traveled in and instead of getting on the underground, I got on the overhead, which I've never, ever had a panic attack on. And as soon as the doors closed, I just freaked out and had like a massive panic attack. And it was at that point I was like, I need to get help with this. This is just ridiculous. And then obviously the rest of the day just spiraled out of control. <laughs> oh, I had that's like, a right. massive all day um, and that went on for a couple of weeks actually didn't they until i saw you yeah yeah how, how far back had these uh, panic attacks been going i mean prior to that was it years months or weeks yes, years but never like that they, they it was usually a reason why i had panic attacks i could always put it down to i was in a, a situation i was uncomfortable in or um yeah, like if I felt trapped or if there was too many people around me, that there was, there was always a reason. Mm -hmm. But both of these days, they just come out of nowhere. There was no real reason that they decided to happen that day. And then the rest, after I spoke to you that day, I had one at my desk at work that went on. That's, it just continued for yeah. weeks. Because you also had a bit of a problem with lifts as well, didn't you? you get, get, or is it lifts or stairs? Uh, lifts. I don't like. I don't like close, enclosed spaces. It's right. Like, okay. Get out when I want to. Then yeah, I don't. Like, and I'm I'm usually fine when things are moving. It's when they start stopping that I. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. and aggy. <laughs> oh, so tell us about your experience with regards hypnosis, because we did we did two things, didn't we? We did um, hypnosis and we did Reiki. And for those who don't know, uh, not only am I a hypnotherapist, but I also do a spot of Reiki as well. But over to you, what, what was your experience of the hypnosis that you had with me? It was amazing. After the first session of hypnosis, oh, I was able to get, well, at the start of the session, you tried to get me to get in my little cupboard that was full of rubbish. Um, and I couldn't even get in there, let alone shut the door or even, but by the end of the session, I was in the cupboard, I'd shut the door and I mm. was quite happy to stand in there and I felt fine. Yeah. Um, over the course of the months that I saw you, I think I saw you, for a good few months actually it was just mm. before lockdown that we finished and it's yeah. like October time um over that course of that months I could do so much stuff my life has totally changed um and I have more confidence in myself my anxiety is probably never ever going to totally leave me but yeah. it is so much more manageable you gave me ways to cope with it and deal with it and I know if I ever have any problems, you're always on the end of the phone as well. Like I've only got to text you and say, I'm having a bad day. And always. you're straight on the phone or, or messaging back. So, yeah, mm. you have been invaluable. In, you know. Have you ever had to call me back, though? A couple of times I have, yeah. yeah. A couple I've of times, done. okay. And we've yeah. dealt with that, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah, my life is so much better, so different. Mm. So what's yeah. changed in your life now? What are you doing with your time? Um. Well, I'm not at work at the moment, but I can't wait to get back to work. But I have signed up to do a degree, a law degree, um, to become a solicitor. Yeah. I have become the head of my children's PTA at their school. Um, things that the thought of having to do things like that would have panicked me. Like that, I had to do more things, and and I and I couldn't couldn't cope with anything. And I just yeah. So my I just feel. Since having it done, I feel more confident in that I'm not going to get be in them situations that make me really uncomfortable, or that I won't, I can't cope, or that I'm not good enough to do things. Or, yeah. Right, so yeah. Outstanding. And we also did, as we said, a little bit of Reiki. What was your experience of that? That was brilliant. I'd had a chest infection actually since that week that I first 
phoned you was when the chest infection started um, and it hadn't shifted. And I remember you doing the Reiki around January, February time and it actually started clearing my sinuses and my chest. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time in ages it had done. And also I'd had a pain from the previous time when you'd done it, I had a pain in my, my knee. It was my right knee and I've never had that pain back since then yeah Um, one of the things with one of the things here is um for for everybody who's listening um the the thing about pain is it doesn't have to if you've ever woken up um in the morning and realized that you've got a really bad pain and you've been to your gp and they said well we can't find anything wrong this is essentially your body telling you that something is not right with you and it can be something quite mental so something emotional but not necessarily physical so if you have a pain and um a gp says well i can't find anything physically wrong with you um then there is something emotionally going on there you know something in the background which um it, your body is just basically telling you you need to address this particular issue but it's a matter of finding out what that actual issue is isn't it which is where hypnosis again comes in um so all in all um, I would say you're quite a happy little thing there, aren't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think the smile says it all there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot happier, a lot more settled, content. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Um, so I take it I'd be recommended then. <laughs> yes, I do, I do recommend you to anyone, anyone who I know that has anxiety. And I'm like, oh, my hypnotherapist, he's amazing. You should, you should give him a ring. Thank you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I mean, I, I can't thank you enough, like I said, for coming on here, because like I say to all my clients, um, you, you, you said that the hypnosis was amazing. I was amazing, this, that, and the other. But as I've told you before, Carly, this is all down to you. It's having the strength of mind and the will to actually want to make those changes. So you've gone from somebody who's having panic attacks on trains, uh, not able to go into small, you know, confined spaces, um, to being this far more confident person who's now, as a result of that, decided well, I'm going to do a degree. So hats off to you because it's you that's done the work. It really is. So congratulations to you. Um, Thank you. And uh, ladies and gents, I I hope that you found that really insightful, a a wonderful, you know, testimonial from Carly here. Um, And it's important to know that that you may have issues going on in, you know, as a result and, and having panic attacks, these things can be resolved. And hypnosis is a very natural phenomenon, as, as Carly will attest. You know, it's, you don't go to sleep, do you, as I explained to you. It's, it, it's, um, it, it's a very natural thing. And you can hear everything that's going on. You can feel if you're touched. But you just kind of, I don't know, did you, do you find, did you, find you zone, zoned out or were you just, how did you feel? Um, I just felt really relaxed. Yeah, I was definitely zoned out. I could hear everything you said. Um, but your mind takes over and things play out in your mind. Um, yeah, I, I remember you trying to make me open my eyes and for all the will in the world, they, they weren't. Didn't they? Yeah, what Carly, absolutely. What Carly's talking about there is when, when we do an induction, one of the inductions I do, um, I, could, I could either make your arm go very stiff and you can't bend it or the fingers come together and you can't stop that. Um, I could stick your hands at a table to make you go into hypnosis. But what I did with Carly was um, a nice gentle induction whereby we just say, well, close your eyes and just breathe nice and easily and notice how you cannot now open your eyes no matter how hard you try to open your eyes and it, you just couldn't do it could you and at that point it is the strangest thing so yeah that, that's what Carly's on about there so I'm, I'm gonna say thank you once again for that for that Carly um, ladies and gents my name is Mark Carter of Mark Carter Hypnotherapy um, if you need help with uh, anxiety or post-trauma um, have a look at my link on Facebook or YouTube um, click that link and you'll go to my calendar, make an appointment and you can have a free 45 minute consultation with me and we can work things through as to, you know, how, how good a fit we are. And from there we can, we can uh, make changes as Carly will tell you. (laughs) Okay. Ladies and gents, thanks very much. I wish you all the very best of mental and emotional health. Carly, thanks again. And um, good night. Good night.